right after Dark Star, I knew that I needed to start something new. So I started coming up with little treatments of ideas of, of what I would do. I knew, I knew I wanted to do a feature film. And uh, so I wrote about five or six little treatments. And they were basically little Twilight Zone episodes or night gallery uh, episodes that I wanted to expand and make full length. Everything was the one that flowed to the top. I feel that we have a really good story. Uh, we have great people. Believe it or not, it is possible to make a film for less than $50 million. Technology is no longer a limit. Uh, and we can really compete with other productions. At the beginning of the casting process, uh, Jeff contacted me and wanted my input on local actors because he wanted to do this locally as much as possible. You take a camera and you wind it up and you know, you aim it and you make movies. But uh, we don't use these anymore. I started making movies when I was about 12 years old um, with an 8mm film camera my grandfather gave me. And uh, that's how I got started, you know. Um, that's how I got started acting too. I used to play Stan Laurel and a, a friend of mine played Oliver Hardy and uh, we made movies all the time. The first thing he did was send me the script and I read the script and loved it. Was very intrigued by it. It's, it's friends, you know, doing a project basically together. The characters were so colorful and finely drawn and specific that people that I knew and had worked with or had seen their work uh, in the local theater community and film community began to immediately occur to me. I feel like a lot of things are a hell of a lot easier out here. You don't have to worry with some of the uh, money hemorrhaging practices of Los Angeles. We started with a project called Dark Star. Uh, Dark Star was a very interesting project. Uh, it lasted for at least 10 years. Uh, it was an all CGI project. Our actors, though, were shot on green screen. It was interesting because we made do with uh, equipment and technology. A lot of people told us there's no way it was going to work. Shooting on the screen screen footage, uh, try to make decent keys out of it, and marry it in with CG footage. And we did a lot of work in Hollywood on this project and learned a lot. And the main thing I learned is that I like working right here in Missouri. It became clear very quickly that we were on parallel tracks. We were very parallel in our thinking about what the movie uh, it was and should look like. So that was a luxury from the very beginning. And we started to schedule many screen tests and it was, an, it was a rather exhaustive process over several weeks where we got as many actors together as we could, tried combinations and it became thrilling very quickly to see these people stepping into these parts and seeing it come to life and that it was really going to work. When you deal with a lot of actors, there are a lot of personalities and I feel like we've been blessed with a lot of people who uh, are not pains. Uh, we don't have any prima donnas. They get their job done and they're helpful and they're encouraging and uh, they help promote the project. A very trusting and collaborative uh, and joyful process. So that's been a real joy out here and I don't know if we would get that working in the studio system. I feel like everyone would treat it more as a job. Obviously everyone wants to be successful, wants to see their film um, released in the theaters. Normally a movie is uh, initiated by a big studio. They say we're going to make a movie and it's going to be a science fiction film and it's going to have Tom Cruise. Uh, let's find a director and a script writer to put this together. We're doing it the opposite way. Back when we were doing Dark Star, there was no way that we could match the quality and stuff that uh, uh, people were doing in Hollywood. Everything was still film-based. No digital technology, we have finally reached a level to where we can compete with that. We don't really have permission uh, to make movies. We're really not allowed to make feature films, but we're going to do it anyway. Well, it's a very vibrant theater and film community. Of course, we're filming local. Um, in the um, great state of Missouri, in the heartland of filmmaking country. <laughs> Say that with a straight face. In, for such a small uh, part of the country, Southwest Missouri, not really known for the arts. Uh, we know it here, but uh, for the rest of the country, it, it, I think anybody coming here would be surprised uh, the depth 
and breadth of the talent here that we have. There's no reason uh, with the level playing field now that you have with resolution to not make a good film. Produce a good quality story. I think if we do that, the rewards will come. But that's not what's driving this. You know, it's all about a good script, uh, great acting, and good photography, you know, editing, and all those things that make it uh, a piece of art. That's what film is. This is a different kind of film in that it's more of a art film in that there's a lot of dialogue, there's a lot of story. As we've been producing it, it's been turning slowly into a dark comedy uh, more than I expected. I was expecting this to be more of a drama, uh, a kind of a dark uh, psychological thriller. I'm, I'm enjoying the evolution of how the execution of my script is turning into something that I wasn't really completely expecting. And when things like that happen and that spontaneity changes the direction, it keeps it fresh for me. Because I've been working on this script for two years. So now that some new things are coming out of it, it keeps me all invigorated. And there were a few surprises, uh, mostly from Jeff saying, let's try it this way. Let's, let's flip this a little bit. And um, what was parallel became parallax because we sort of uh, began to look at things from a little bit different uh, position or a little bit different uh, perspective and things really began to click and pop at that point. My name is Rebecca and I'm working on the film Everything as a makeup artist and also with special effects makeup. There are a lot of fun special effects with this film, you know, involving some blood. I guess my first foray into makeup was just taking the basic stage makeup class in college I just kind of hopped on some student films and things produced at my college, um, one of which landed me next to Nathan Shelton, and so he kind of became my mentor and guided me along, and so I learned a lot from him. He, he brings a really uh, broad sensibility, and he's the one who brought in Rebecca. Nathan Shelton designed the makeup for a doll, one of the primary characters in everything. We were both there on the day that we were basically doing the test shots for the makeup and also just, I guess, developing it. She's at every shoot, she makes up everybody, and she, she made our, our, our cat. One of the things in particular that I worked on is a dead cat. And so we started out with a carcass and then glue on all of this fur, but also make it look matted because the backstory is that it died of mange. Also did some distressing of the fur and then, you know, carve out some eye sockets and then plug in the eyeballs and basically restructure its face and had to paint the exposed flesh so that it looked a little more realistic and just a little dabble of blood here and there. The live version of the cat's name is Wilford Brimley, so that'll show up on Wilford's IMDb, I bet, with a picture of a cat, which I think is hilarious. Some of the things I do are a little bit of everything. I've had him run Facebook pages, uh, he mows my lawn, um, and, and now he's, uh, he's assistant director of this uh, film. Uh, and also got a part-time sound guy. I'm Grip. He goes to get our food. Uh, Sometimes I'm additional lighting. Uh, he waxed my car for me once. Um, uh, and I get sandwiches for people from time to time. Cleans the house. Uh, babysits my kids. I'm also his agent provocateur. I'm the one that uh, gets him to do things he wouldn't otherwise do. I'm pretty much responsible for everything good that happens in this production. You know, since we don't have very robust child labor laws here in Missouri, I've been using him for a lot of things, and using is the key word here. All of his great ideas came from me, including the ones before he met me and before I was born. They were all retroactively inspired by me. I am the writer, director, producer. Who has so big an ego, he also wanted to play a large role in the film, so he is the death character, uh, Doll Isaac Everhart. What do I really think? of J. Allen Williams. What does he really like to work with? I despise him. Oh, hi, Jeff. I'm doing this because I'm a masochist. And, and uh, all great filmmakers are masochists. They go through incredible pain just to get something done. Didn't see you there. Jeff is one of the biggest masochists of them all. I've got like 50 titles just like everybody else in the film. Uh, pretty typical of a uh, independent movie being made in the Midwest, you know, we, we don't have the huge crew. We all are friends and uh, work together and get together to do projects all the time. Our cast includes uh, the beautiful Bojana Kavar, uh, Jennifer Eifert, Jeffrey Gould, 
as uh, Victor Harlan, the antagonist of this narrative, and we have George Cron as Dr. Gideon. We have Nathan Shelton as Marcus Pennington. We have Phil Secca as De Silva, the detective. In this film, I play the role of uh, Lieutenant uh, Spencer De Silva. He's a cop who has an encounter with this dark angel. He's not killing anybody. He's just there when you die. That's his job. He does that. I'm seeing this relationship between De Silva and, and Dahl as kind of an uneasy liaison. Detective De Silva, who is my dubious friend, I really, my character has a lot of affection for him actually, but I uh, can't really have friends, you know, because this is not good for their health. They tolerate each other. There's a lot that the detective doesn't understand about this character and about what's going on. In protecting this doll character, he's protecting himself too. He doesn't want to appear to be out of control. And it goes completely awry. Doll is getting bored or something like that because he starts making deals. He starts talking to some of these people and, and seeing, you know, what, what they would give to live forever. Uh, that just compounds his guilt, and that's part of the reason he relates to Doll so well. You know, we've invested in, in a lot of new equipment just for this project. Uh, Rogers just purchased us a uh, black magic camera. We're actually able to uh, shoot 4K footage uh, for under $5,000 for equipment cost. That was unheard of a few years ago. The reason I cast myself as a lead character is because I simply couldn't afford the kind of guy that I knew could, could do what I was seeing in my head. And GoPro cameras. Uh, we slapped it on the hood of a, of a cab in London. It's small, it's not very noticeable, so it doesn't draw attention, and we just drove, and it looked just great. So you could do a lot of things, um, <clears throat> such as uh, put it into a styrofoam cup on an airplane. Uh, yes, no, this was not me. This was our director, Jeff Williams. Please direct all lawsuits to him. We wanted to add that extra element to it. Um, and just really, I think, take this production up a notch. I mean, it's been a blessed project. People just seem to come into our line of sight just when we need them. I hope you enjoy the process, because we are.